working for IBM. So as a Java developer advocate, mm -hmm. so I'm basically continuing uh, what I did before, being self-employed, being a consultant, speaking about Java, speaking about enterprise software in general, um, doing a lot of well conference uh, work, giving presentations, writing articles, producing videos, and all that type of work that I really enjoy, sharing knowledge for developers. This is now officially my job. You had a talk about uh, yes. ja Jakarta EE and micro profiles. Right. Okay, so first like tell us like what's the what's the difference and what are they? What is yes. Jakarta EE? What is micro? Yes, exactly. And that was the whole motivation of this talk to give a little bit of uh, of overview of what uh, developers should care about. So ultimately it's um, well Jakarta EE um, um, starts where Java EE went up, right? So mm -hmm. that's um, how Java EE is continued under the um, Eclipse Foundation. So it is a set of standards of enterprise Java standards uh, that are continued to be supported, right? Like everything that's included there, CDI, JAXRS, and all, all these things, all the APIs that developers know. Uh, MicroProfile, well, it is for now um, a set of not standards, but projects that are defined by multiple vendors in order to uh, to move faster, right? So not to, to wait for the whole standardization process that we had in the past, but it's basically which um, is a way of thinking, where is uh, Java EE lacking? Which gaps do we have uh, as of today? Or same true uh, with, uh, with Jakarta EE. And how can we fill these gaps? Things uh, like resiliency or configuration or fault tolerance. Um, so these things are now added to um, a micro profile, so gradually become new micro profile projects, mm -hmm. and then well can be used by developers. So, so are they um, uh, APIs plus other pieces of uh, software that um, that vendors are providing? I mean, how d how how do you uh, think yes. about? Yes, um, so it's it's actually somewhat similar to how Java EE uh, worked. So uh, the micro profile projects is basically a specification. Yep. plus a few APIs like annotations, interfaces, and then the vendors provide the implementations for that. Okay. So okay. there so are multiple microprofile uh, run right. Okay, quite. And my talk was uh, about like how can enterprise projects, well, first of all, get a proper overview over all yep. that world and then benefit from it. Mm -hmm. right? Because a lot of uh, projects are using plain Java EE that has all, well, or a few gaps still, even in Java EE 8, because a few things are still missing that we need in a microservice world. Mm -hmm. And how can we sensibly close these gaps? So my talk was about comparing plain Java EE and also plain micro profile mm -hmm. that you can certainly use, but I argue would also have some other gaps that Java EE supports that is not or not yet part of micro profile. For example, transactions, persistence for databases, and all these things we also somewhat need, right, in projects. Right. So my conclusion is, and this is in general how I see Jakarta EE and micro profile, is to get the best of both worlds, to use it in a combination Mm -hmm. to say, okay, we use a runtime and application server that uh, supports Java EE, Java EE 8, for example, and then we use MicroProfile, just a few projects, the specifications and the things we need to fill and close these gaps, right? Okay. So for example, say we use Java EE 8 plus MicroProfile configuration or plus MicroProfile metrics or fault tolerance because we need that in our microservice world. Okay. But we still use a somewhat, um, somewhat n well, proper uh, application server or Java EE 8 um, capable um, application server, a runtime, that also supports uh, micro profile. I think this is somewhat a sweet spot, a somewhat killer feature uh, of these two, these two technologies combined. Okay, so you need to give us like an example. I think that uh, in the abstractions it makes sense, right. but uh, so do you do you go into like a specific examples about uh, that? Or? Yes. So in okay. my talk, I, um, sh I showed some code examples, yep. and they're actually um, also online. You can find them in my, uh, my Twitter profile. Where mm -hmm. I tweeted about it. Um, so, for example, I did um, two applications, two microservice applications that are based on Java EE. Mm -hmm. So these are Java EE applications that also have the dependencies for it was MicroProfile config and fault tolerance. Okay. And the nice story is if your runtime supports both Java EE slash Jakarta EE and MicroProfile, you can um, use it in the same way with the deployment model where you don't have to actually ship all these implementations because your runtime supports it and just define them in a, as a provided dependency, use the APIs and that's it. Then build and ship your project in the same way as you would do it with plain Java EE, but now it also closes these gaps by supporting MicroProfile. 
I that's see. a very, I would say, sensible way to tackle that in projects because then you don't have to fully swap and change everything mm -hmm. uh, from how you deploy or what your runtime is. You basically just add um, a few more, a little bit more of technology and try to close these gaps. Cool. Okay, so uh, then you um, so you cover uh, you said uh, um, deployment. Right. So you think about like how you deploy. Yes. And and um, and there was one key, and then the container support. So how do you m mix that into um, yes. this um, microprofile? So the deployment model. What I think makes a lot of sense um, is to try to optimize the deployment artifacts, the things mm -hmm. that you're shipping, so that they are still small. So that means you, um, you ship thin deployment artifacts that only contain your business logic, the classes you compile, literally just the Java classes you have in your project, and the rest is already provided by the runtime. So that has been true uh, for years for Java EE, right? And if you use the combination with Java EE and MicroProfile, or in general, if you use a runtime that supports that deployment model, that is also true with that combination, and, and it's also true in the future. Um, so there are a few um, application containers that support that. So um, one is OpenLiberty, a few others are um, Wifly, Tommy, and Payara, mm -hmm. that are standalone application servers, but that also support uh, MicroProfile 2.0. So where you can use that combination. And it's specifically that deployment model makes a lot of sense in Docker containers and Linux containers mm -hmm. uh, because of um, their file system support, their copy and write file system, that you literally can cache everything that did not change, but only the last tiny bit, your deployment artifact, which is tiny, changes, and you only have to transmit and you know um, so support that. You only um, de deploy that very tiny change which I think makes a lot of sense for enterprise projects. So you optimize just for the, uh, for the moving parts because you should deploy very often, right? Mm -hmm. You have a lot of uh, changes there and then you save yourself a lot of um, time and bandwidth, basically. Okay, so you, uh, you, you, you can make it like really like skinny or yes. simplify least, and, yes. then, and then Yes, and then at least the, par uh, the parts you always keep uh, shipping. Right, so okay. So I think that makes a lot of, uh, lot of sense right. or at least from experience in projects.